that Chad and Leopard done, let's pull out the 140. Hello everybody, welcome to the Coalition Singapore YouTube channel. I'm your host Robbie Winkonobi and today we will be talking about the Object 140. We will be comparing it to other tanks, checking out its stats, and then we will be moving on to some gameplay. So I want to start off by talking about the path to it. Just don't do what I did. <laughs> Go the LTTB 54 lightweight route because you will need those tanks and you will want to keep them later on. I actually researched these tanks before those lines were out, that's why I didn't research them yet, but for anybody out there who wants to get the 140 and the 62A, that would be the better route to researching it. Alright, and I have all four vehicles lined up now. These are the main vehicles you're going to be comparing to, basically. These are all Russian mediums, but they are all a bit different. Uh, the Object 140 is the best by clan war standards that means by in clan wars it will get picked first uh, followed by 62a 907 and then last the 430 the reason for this mainly is because the 140 has better gun depression like all these tanks have pretty similar statistics um the 62a has a better turret armor because the hatches are a bit smaller the object 907 is a bit faster and it has better frontal armor actually uh, all the hall armors are noted, like listed about the same, except for the Object 430, which has a bit more. But it's all about the different angles of the armor. Like the 62A seems to have less armor at the front. It just the angle doesn't seem to be that great. Whereas the Object uh, 140 seems to bounce more stuff off the front. Mm, the rate of fire is pretty similar. Turret speed similar. View range similar. <laughs> exactly the same actually. The guns are pretty much the same, except the gun on the 907 does have uh, 0.36 accuracy compared to 0.35, but it's not a big difference, and it does aim faster, so yeah. The guns, yeah, the guns are pretty much the same. Uh, the tanks go about the same speed. There's not really a big difference, like in engine power and traverse speed. It's like, you know, it doesn't really, they don't really play that differently from each other. The main reason why the Object 140 is picked uh, above the other tanks uh, for Clan Wars is mainly because of the gun depression. It does have, a, I think, one degree or two degrees more gun depression than the other ones. So you are able to fire your gun more reliably. And uh, yeah, you don't go into those problem areas where you just can't fire your gun, you have a hard time. Like, I played my 62A a lot, and then I switched to the 140, and then when I went back to the 62A, I had a really hard time playing it because of the gun depression. I just wasn't used to it, and it was just hard to get into different areas where I could snipe and be of use. So yeah, mainly the one, the reason why I'm doing this uh, review on the 140 and not on the other tanks, uh, I could make a review on all of them, but they all kind of play the same way. But the 140 is, in my opinion, the best of all of them just because it does have better gun depression and that does help you fire your gun more. I mean this thing doesn't really have a lot of armor, mainly turret armor, but you know you can't really count on that. So yeah, the 140 is basically my choice of vehicle to take into Clan Wars. So now that we're done comparing the different Russian tanks, let's talk about crew skill. I like to go with Six Sands, Brothers in Arms, and then I usually have camo on uh, third skill and fourth skill, just because it really helps. I used to have mentor, but I took it off recently just because I have five skills and I don't think I'm going to be grinding out any new crew skills on this, so I put uh, recon instead. But yeah, like uh, standard stuff, you know, uh, I would say camo would be very good on these tanks since they have really good camo and it will help you a lot in spotting targets and shooting them from far away. Also, note about the crew, if you have an Object 907, you can switch your crew out um, as you wish. So I can just like double click over here, I think, and yeah, it switches the crew automatically to my uh, 907, so I can just ready it up for battle. They essentially the same crew, and this is my 62A crew, which is not as good, but yeah. Anyways, so yeah, that's about it for the crew.
So the loadout is up to you, but I like to go with 35 standard and then 15 gold. I don't load any HE because this tank does not have a lot of ammo and I have run out of ammo before on it. So yes, but I still load 15 uh, gold rounds just in case I run up against any hard targets. This is mainly from far away, if you're sniping from far away, because the heat rounds don't lose any penetration over distance, whereas the APCR do. So if you're firing at like uh, E100s or a mouse or just something really heavily armored or even an I7 can be kind of annoying, uh, yeah, just switch to heat rounds. But uh, yeah, the APCR really will go through most things, like especially the sides. You really don't want to be firing uh, heat rounds at the side of tanks just because they will just get absorbed by tracks or spaced armor, so it's really not a good option. Uh, equipment, standard, uh, small <laughs> first aid kit, small repair kit, uh, automatic fire extinguisher, of course. This thing does get lit on fire quite, oh, not that much, but it does get lit on fire occasionally. Uh, for the equipment, I go with vents, rammer, and optics just because I like to spot. I like to get that extra view range out to really be able to spot my own targets and shoot them. So yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, equipment. Let's look at some gameplay. So, Fisherman's Bay. So I will be filming this also in a locked camera so you can see whatever I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna go over the strat real quick. Usually I like to hang out around the middle here because in this medium tank you have pretty good gun depression. This is why I like the Object 140 because you can do this kind of thing as opposed to the Batcha and T62A where you will be having trouble here in the middle. Mm, I usually don't go over here unless I'm in a platoon and we're planning on pushing down the one line. And of course I don't go town because uh, that's a heavy, heavy area to go. Even in my heavy it is I don't go town. So I'm going to be going this area this game and we'll be seeing what is going to happen. Mm, I see this platoon of, oh, my clan members. So yeah, I think I said hi to them. So here just rolling to the central position, looking around. Here I'm mainly looking at my mini map and trying to figure out who's going to be in the middle, who am I going to engage there. I'm seeing there's two enemy uh, medium tanks, so I'm kind of apprehensive as what's going to go on. Also I'm looking right now and I'm seeing that I'm the only medium tank that's going to the middle. So that's another thing I got to be careful for. I'm looking at my team and they all seem to be going to the left side of the map. So this little area here is really nice. It's a very nice little spot here. Oh, I spot T62A. Let's see if I can get a shot. Boom, and there you go. So that's me shooting my own teammate, which is not great. <laughs> I think I put like three little dots. I get kind of annoyed. I should say sorry, really, but he was seriously just driving down the middle. I know he was trying to spot something, and somebody else laughs about it. So yes, that was my bad, I guess. So over here I'm hiding behind this house because I got lit and I'm scared of Artie. That's the main thing I'm scared about in the middle here is usually Artie. So I'm gonna hide behind this house and wait for myself to be unlit. One of my teammates is lining 62 ways, so that's pretty good, so I don't need to worry about him. So now I'm gonna back out slowly and see if there's anybody there. But yeah, the main thing you wanna do with this spot is right here. There's this bush right in front of you here and you can hide behind this bush and usually be able to shoot through town. So you can see, as I move forward, the bush becomes uh, invisible and then when I move out, oh, there I got lit. But I did not get lit from the I-7, I got lit from the I-6 there. So that was something else. But I'm trying to use this bush here. This is what you call blind firing through a bush. So what you do, you get up close behind the bush and you spot the target and then you move back to shoot so that you don't get lit. So here I'm just trying to disappear for a bit. I knocked down those uh, houses there because that's the area that I'm going to be wanting to shoot through. So I need to knock it down first. And here what I'm doing, you see, this bush right now is invisible. But I'm going to move, I mean it's not invisible, this bush right now is totally visible. <laughs> and I'm going to be moving up to make it invisible. And I'm going to be moving up just enough to make it invisible so I can spot through it. And then I'm going to be backing up when I fire. So this is how you blind fire through a bush. It's pretty useful to learn in any tank, actually. You can do this anything. See, dang. So right now, I lit the IS-7, and as you can see, the bush is see-through right now. That means that if I shoot, this bush will not protect me, will not give me any camo value for the next, I think, five or ten seconds. I forgot what it is. But anyways, don't fire through the bush when it's invisible. You need to back up enough so that the bush becomes uh, opaque again. So I'm going to speed it up. So over here, I'm looking. And there's a gap in the houses. 
over here, and I'm trying to see if I can get a shot. Ah, there you go. Bam, and I put one in through the front wheel. So here he didn't spot me because, basically, he should have spotted me because I was too close to the bush, but he didn't spot me because his viewports are actually on top of his tank, and there was only the front of his tank sticking out, so he couldn't spot me. The main thing I'm scared about right now, though, is this IS-6 to my side, basically. He's the one. He's a blue player, so I know he's pretty good. So he's the main one I'm kind of scared about. I'm going to put another one to the I-7. So right now, yeah, I'm... Ah, I'm gonna get lit. So I got lit by the I-7 there because he could see me. This guy's gonna cross, I'm gonna shoot him. So I'm not getting lit from that guy. And there you go, he gets hammered. I think it might have been by Artie. Something, so here I'm really scared, and bam. So I eat a shell from the I-6 here, not really good. Out of position, and I'm trying to disappear again right now because I'm kind of scared of the 54 and the I-7 there. Put one into the 54, then back down. Here I'm using my turret basically, and I know I'm lit, so I know Artie might be looking at me. So I'm kind of trying to disappear. Like, in times like this, you really have to try to disappear, because you know Artie's going to be looking at you from above, so if you disappear, Artie might lose interest and go after something else. So here, dang, and I put one in, and back down, bang, see? And there's the turret coming into play. So basically, the turret does have weak spots. It has those two little hatches on top, but if you're moving around and wiggling, it's very hard for them to get a clear shot on it. So it does bounce almost anything. So here, I'm mainly worried about the IS-6, basically. I'm not really worried about those guys in town because they're not lighting me. And he's not even looking at me. So yeah, the main thing, see, I get lit right now. And again, it's just because I didn't play my position properly and because of the IS-6. So the IS-6 is the main thing that's stopping me here from really farming damage. Yeah, this is just keeps on lighting me. He's a good player, so yeah. Here, I bounce off him, of course. <laughs> but yeah, and I'm seeing uh, right now in the minimap that they're really pushing town. So I'm kind of getting worried right now because if they push around town, they'll get behind me and then I'll be dead, basically. So I'm, I know there's like a time frame I need to kill this... I six in. I'm starting to hurry a bit. Looking at the low. So yeah, whenever you can, just try to get free damage. Oh, I seven over here. So here I'm kind of like, uh, no, 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 no. Kind of thinking I gotta get out of here. And I spot our bat chat going around on the I six. And this is where I think, hmm, okay, maybe we can work together. So side turret, yes. So I know the I six not looking at me. He's focused on the bat chat right now. And I'm going to keep putting something into the side turret. So this here is where you see the gun depression really comes into play, basically. I-7, not paying attention. Like, in a 62A, this would be hard. In the batch out, this would be really hard. But here, just because you have that gun depression, it can really work. So here, I'm going to go help our batch out because he's going to be in trouble. Get shot from behind. And there you go, yeah. See, now I'm starting to get shot from behind. So now I decide, okay, this side of the map is now safer for me, basically. So I'm switching over to their side of the map just because I'm going to start getting shot in the ass soon by uh, the enemy team who took over the town. So yeah, I'm going to come around, I'm going to help this bat chat. There's not really anything I can do for the bat chat over here because he's face hugging the I-7, which is really not smart. Like, in Clan Wars you would never do that in a medium. And, oh, set him on fire, okay. So right now I'm trying to go away from the town basically because I know there's too many of them there. Let me see if I can get some free damage here, and then I'm like, oh, okay, no, never mind. So I'm going to come back towards the middle, see if I can get some shots on them. So basically, in this tank, you really want to keep distance uh, to your enemy, because it has pretty good accuracy, and it's really good camo, so you just want to keep the distance. And here, I'm just going to sit in the bush, because patience. I mean, you know, these are... 15 minute games and you have time here to just wait you don't need to like rush in and try to kill them there's four tanks over there and I don't really want to YOLO in and die so up spot an eyes five bang to the front so there you go and that was me spotting him as well like you can see my teammates are actually behind me so I actually lit him up and then shot him so that's view range at work here I'm waiting I'm thinking there somebody might come over there on the E4 or the low. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Hoping somebody comes, basically. Because I know I'll light them. And then our 69 moves forward. So this is a mistake from the 69. He should have waited, really. Because he's really lightly armored. And he's not going to light anything. The 69 has really bad view range. So shoot him. Bounce, of course. That was a quick shot. 
But now he's reloading and I see the reload timer on in something. Oh, I can put one more in. And now I'm gonna hide a bit. And yeah, so now I know that E4 is gonna be wanting to get a shot on me. He's coming around, he gets shot once, and I'm like, uh, no! And here I'm trying not to get shot, trying not to get shot, and I... And I reload right in time, basically, to finish him off. So that was pretty lucky. Roll forward. Low. And then smack. Of course, Artie. Typical. <laughs> it's always Artie that gets you in these games. So, yeah, and when I was tracked there, I was really scared that 54 was going to clip me out. Because he was last spotted down there, so... I thought he was going to clip me out from the side. So, pretty lucky. So, I moved down here. And at this point of the game, we won, basically. So I'm just gonna go try to farm some more damage. But you can see from this replay, like, I didn't really YOLO out or do anything too drastic, you know? Too heroic. <laughs> I'm just sitting there using my camo, just playing smart. I mean, in any tank, you really just have to play smart, you know? Just be aware of your surroundings and aware of what's looking at you, mainly. Because, like, a lot of tanks will not pay attention to you if you disappear for long enough. So sometimes that's all you gotta do, basically, just disappear for a while and you will be free from arty fire and all that other bad, terrible stuff. So, anyways, that's it for this replay. Uh, let's look at the post-battle. So, here's the post-battle. I think it's kind of annoying as well that you have to upload it to Rote Replays to actually see the post-battle results. Like, you can't just watch it on your replays on your computer, which is kind of weird. And, yeah, I guess it's something Wargaming would have to change later on. Uh, so yeah, Ace Tanker and 5,400 upwards damage, uh, pretty good game. Team damage over here. <laughs> uh, also not really playing on premium. Yeah, and that's about it. As you can see from the game, it wasn't really like an epic, epic game. Just sitting there doing damage, playing it smart, using the bush to uh, invis snipe targets, and just being aware of my surroundings basically. Being aware of Artie, that's the main thing, and uh, yeah, just playing it smart. Well, this concludes our three-part series on uh, the three tier 10 Clan Wars viable medium tanks, the Object 140, the Leopard 1, and the Bat Chat. If you haven't seen those replays and those videos yet, please check it out also on this channel. Next week, Lakushime will make a video about the T49 US light tank, so tune in for that. It should be pretty awesome. Also, we have a, an event going on right now on our Facebook page, and you can check it out. You might be able to leave with some free bonus codes, so that's pretty good. If you like this video, please make sure to check out our other videos in this series. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please rate and comment. I'm your host, Robbie Wan Kenobi, and I will see you guys next time.